Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kens TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chiz channel if you're not already subscribed. Hit that post notification so anytime I bring you this action, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. Now, with no further ado, let's get into uh, this evening's video, if you will. You know, I'm a big hip-hop head, you know. Um, I love hip-hop. Not so much of the new stuff. Not knocking the younger dudes. I just... I don't really relate to a lot of it at this point, but some of it I do like, you know what I'm saying? Some dudes out there that's really, you know, that I'm feeling, but more so, um, I'm still listening to music in the nineties, you know what I'm saying? Early two thousands, my Tupac, my Biggie, my Master P, you know what I'm saying? Cash Money Records, you know, I, I, as, uh, Wayne, there's still people that I listen to to this day, but I'm just not really up on hip hop the way that I once was, but nevertheless, I was watching um I was watching YouTube earlier and you had Birdman on Clubhouse. And for you all that don't know, you know, Birdman he owns uh Cash Money Records along with his brother, you know, Slim Williams. So I was asking him about Master P and you know, he was saying that he respects Master P and you know, anybody that made it in the music business, especially being where they from, you know, he definitely uh has a great appreciation for him. And, you know, they asked him some street questions, and Birdman was just pretty much, you know, he wasn't saying P wasn't in the streets like that. He was just saying that, you know, he didn't really want to deeply uh, uh, divulge into that type of information. But, yeah, you have people that jump online, and Birdman, this is Master P. Birdman, people are always trying to pit two people, you know what I mean, two artists against each other or two CEOs, or two people that's in the same lane against each other, when there's no need to do that. You see what I'm saying? Now, they're both successful, super, super successful. They're in the top five ever as far as record execs. These dudes are from the hood, from nothing, from dirt, like from the dirt for real. They didn't have anybody to show them anything. So, you know, they had to pretty much figure things out through trial and error. But if I have to choose one, if I have to choose one, because you have, you know, you have people that say, uh, Master P, you know, he was the better executive. Then you have a lot of people that say Birdman is the better executive. They both great, great executives, maybe one and one A. You see what I'm saying? Like, as far as if you had to uh, place them in an order, but if I had to choose one, man, I'm, I'm going to go with P. I got to go with I got to go with the kernel of the tank. That's not to take anything away from Birdman and Cash Money, but let me give you a reason why I would go with Master P. For the simple fact that Cash Money Records, they may have been around before No Limit Records. Because from what I hear, you know, Cash Money started in the late 80s. They were already uh uh sort of big, if you will, in New Orleans. They already had a, a following in New Orleans. P came along just a you know a couple years, a few years later, and P had left and went to Richmond, California, in which he was able to create his sound. And eventually he came back to New Orleans. Once, you know, no limit and I'm about it. And, you know, in the mid-90s, once it really, really blew up, he came back to New Orleans. So you have people that try to discredit him, say, oh nah, he went to, you know, he went to uh uh California. See, that's the thing with people. They're always going to hate. Who cares if he went to California? He was born and raised in New Orleans. He left, go to school, play basketball. He injured his knee. Things didn't work out as far as basketball. Then he jumped into the music game. He went to California. Where do most people go? California. But he didn't just leave just for music. You know, he went to try to get out of the hood. Ended up still being in the hood in California. He started to blow up, started his record store. You all know the story. He told it a million and one times. Started his record store. He starts to see all the rappers coming in. And he's like, well, hold on. If these dudes can do it, I can do it. He started No Limit Records. Next thing you know, he moved back to New Orleans. And they really, really blew up. Now, the reason that I feel like Master P is the greatest exec of all times, and I feel like that 
I have to slightly place him above Birdman, even though Birdman has definitely accomplished more in the game. There's no, that's, you know, goes without being said. He's accomplished more. But let me ask you all this. LeBron James has accomplished more than Michael Jordan as far as stats, as far as numbers, as far as money made on the basketball court while he was playing basketball. But does that mean he's better than Michael Jordan? No, he played longer than Michael Jordan. So if you play longer, then your numbers, nine times out of ten, are going to be greater, right? So Birdman's been in the music industry. He never really ventured outside of it. P was in the music industry. He wanted to go play basketball. It didn't work out. I believe that his interest in music, just it just went away. He wasn't really into it like that. He had made all the money in the world. Dudes was dissatisfied. They was leaving. He was, you know, after all the people out in blessed, gave you houses and your own name, cars, money, bank accounts, whatever, all of that stuff in your own name, then you want to leave, you know. So I think P was just really fed up with the business, and he left the business alone to where Birdman kept going. P tried to come back a couple times, but, you know what I'm saying, got to strike the iron while it's hot. The magic was gone. Beats by the pound, they were gone. I don't necessarily think that it was so much about the artist that left. I just think that when P lost beats by the pound, it really changed his sound. He didn't have that same sound. Then you get mystical. He leaves me X. She doesn't want to rap anymore. Snoop is gone. See murder ends up going to prison. You see what I'm saying? So all these artists, Cain and Abel's gone. You have people that's upset with P because they feel like, okay, P yeah, you blessed us, but we need, you did bless us, but why are you mad because we want to see the paperwork? Why are you mad because we want our own attorneys? Why are you mad because we didn't learn about publishing and things of that nature now? So you got people that's upset with P. P feels like, man, I gave y'all this money. I didn't know if I was going to make my money back. Here, I took you out the hood. You didn't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like on uh, one of his songs, uh, um, what did P say, man? In 89, I had a binge. You ain't had a buck. You Ponderoli boy, oh, you doing bad? You see what I'm saying? Like, he's talking to him. Gave a couple couple dudes, send me some tanks now, I want them back. No, 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 I take that back. Let me rewind. I don't edit, so this is my rewind. I gave a couple dudes some tanks, now I want them back. Dude sent me some beats, but I don't want that. In 89, I had a binge, you ain't had a buck. He's talking to all them dudes, he's talking to Beats by the Pound. He's talking to all the artists that just up and left me. I made you when you was nothing. I took you out of the slums, man. You see what I'm saying? I made you. And now you get a little money and you see what the business is really about. So, but at the same time, P has to understand, I mean, it's business. Business is business, B. So people want to know what's really going on. How much am I really owed? You gave me 300 bands. But P, you, you owe me 3 million. Now, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying this is you know, some of the concerns, uh, from what I've gathered. And this is not a thing to bash P obviously I'm not bashing. I'm saying he's the greatest record exec of all times in my opinion, but I'm, I'm just simply saying that's kind of how no limit crumbled and the demise of no limit. Then he came back with the new no limit and he's trying to advertise and promote Romeo and it just wasn't going to work. Like I said, see murder was in jail. Nobody, I'll do respect. Nobody really wanted to hear Romeo like that. Then he, you know, was doing TV shows with the kids on Nickelodeon. Then it was no cussing. Then it was, uh, you know, it, it, P just went through a whole lot of different things because he was trying to get to another level that he knew that gangster rap, if you will, wasn't going to take him to. So he was really trying to get in with some people. If, if you remember, he tried to start the, the black uh, television network, Better Black TV. But then technology changed and everything you know, streaming happened, so that didn't exactly pan out. So, P was trying to do so many other things, but the whole time, Birdman was grinding in the music business. He never really stepped outside of his comfort zone. Yeah, he had a couple endorsement deals, you know, with the lugs, and, you know, he had a couple other things that I can't think of off the top of my head, but his he kept the main thing the main thing, man. And that was music. And he grinded. And even when fe uh, Cash Money started to fall off, and the only person that he had was Lil Wayne, 
Juvie was gone, BG was gone, Turk was gone, every Manny Fresh was gone, everybody was gone. Main uh Wayne stayed. They went back to the drawing board, kept grinding, kept grinding, putting out hits. Next thing you know, Wayne's hot again. Wayne's hot again, and you get Drake. You get Nicki Minaj. And you get Tiger. Everybody keeps saying Tiger. I don't I could be me. I don't really know what Tiger really did in the industry like that. But hey, no hate. I'm just saying people always look at Tiger. But I don't really know what Tiger. I know he was hot for a second. But nevertheless, now cash money is all the way back, but it's a different cash money. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, it's still cash money. So cash money definitely did their thing. They definitely made history. They definitely sold way more records than No Limit. But P paved the way. P paved the way. Man, Snoop said it, man. Wasn't no money in, in rap before uh, Master P came along. So yeah, when P came along and got that 8515 deal, Cash Money came back and got the same deal, but they didn't know anything about that until they seen Master P do it. Nobody will ever Birdman said it. Nobody will ever duplicate what this man did in the music industry, man. This man put out like close to 30 albums in one year, all platinum and gold albums in one year. That would never ever be done because we don't do albums anymore and everything's streaming and it's totally different. But imagine now if Master P is popular as no limit records was back in the day, if they had the internet then and streaming and man p would be a multi-billionaire man a multi-billionaire it's just like some of the athletes that played like if michael jordan played now to where athletes are getting 300 million dollar contracts shaq island iverson all them dudes yeah they paid they made a lot of money but just imagine the money that they're paying out now carmelo all them dudes dwayne wade the money that they're paying out now and if them dudes played now opposed to 10 15 20 years ago you see what i'm saying so it's just it's just one of those things to where p made his bread he got taught of the music industry and he went to go do something you know bigger and better that's all that it was so not taking once again not taking anything away from birdman he did it for a long time and by all accounts it seems as though he's not going to stop doing it anytime soon P just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, he tried it again, but, you know, the thrill was gone. The thrill was gone. However, this man still has a fan base, even with all the people that he's lost. Everybody's gone. A lot of people's gone, rather. Mystical's in jail. See, Murder's in jail. You know, other key component, Big Ed, he passed away. Mr. Magic is gone. I think he passed away. Cain and Abel ain't really fooling with him. Or well, he's not fooling with them. However, you know. So there's a lot of people that, that made that uh, No Limit sound. Beats by the pound. They're no longer there. You know, what's dude's name? Uh, who that? Say they won't do that. Run up if you will. Uh, um, need my nerve for off the curve. Jelly Janet Preserve. Uh, uh, man, I forgot his name. He's gone. You see what I'm saying? Like, all of these dudes that really helped No Limit with that sound, they're all gone. So, yeah, he has Servone. He has uh, uh, The Fiend. He has, you know, Mia X. She goes on tour. Silk. But a, a lot of them are gone. But even with that, he's still selling out 20,000-seat stadiums. Arenas, rather. 20, 21,000, 22,000 seat arenas. Even now. He's getting ready to go on a world tour. I'm not exactly sure when it's starting, but I've seen it. He's going on a world tour. It's like 70 dates, I believe. So when you have that type of, of, of earning power, because that's what that is, earning power. See, these dudes are far from dumb. Master P, uh, uh, Baby, Cash Money Records. If you know your potential to earn, why are you going to have a promoter? Nah, they putting up their own money. Nah, I got all this because I want the whole guap. I want the whole thing. Pause. You see what I'm saying? So if I put up, you know, baby say he's going to put up $100 million for the uh, reunion tour. I'm putting up this money for the reunion tour. Well, guess what? I'm getting it all back. 
and I'm paying the artist whatever they're commanding or whatever we negotiate or whatever, I'm paying that out of the money that comes back in. But I'm putting up the bread. I don't need no promoters to put up the bread. I don't need, nah, I'm doing the whole thing. Young Bleed was dude's name too. No disrespect, I just couldn't remember his name. You know what I mean? Young Bleed. You know what I'm saying? You got Magic. You got all these dudes that P had back in the day and, and a lot of them are not with him. But nevertheless, both of them are doing the same thing I would assume, as far as with the tours. Well, the baby already said it, and I'm sure P's doing the same thing. Two of the best hustlers in the game there ever were. You got uh, Suge Knight. He paved the way. Well, Suge Knight didn't have an 85-15 deal. Suge Knight had a 50-50 uh, split. You got Jay-Z and, and Rockefeller. They had a 50-50 split. Dame Dash talks about it all the time. You got Irv Gotti. Irv Gotti and them, they was hot. They was real hot. They had a 50-50 split with Def Jam. Murder, Inc. and Def Jam. You see what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these labels, they were they were Rough Riders, all them dudes, not knocking any of them. Bad Boy, not knocking any of these labels. But none of them had that 85-15 until P. Because P said, nah, man, I'm going to spend my own bread. P was the first one that did that. I'm going to spend my own money. But we're going to flip. Instead of me getting eight, uh, 15%, y'all get 15%, I get 85 I do all my own marketing, promotion, all of that. The only thing I need you all to do is just distribute my music. Nobody had done that before Master P. So how are you going to say that somebody that came along after that is more successful than him? I gave you the game. Then y'all turn around and use the game against me? I gave you all the game. Nobody knew about this until I did it. Then you had Luke, you had Jay Prince, much respect, much shout out to all them guys, but none of y'all was doing it like that, 85, and then I done came out with 30 albums in one year, close to 30 albums in one year. I'm coming out with shoes, I'm coming out with dolls, I'm coming out with my No Limit clothing, I'm coming out with anything that No Limit touches. It's going gold, it's going platinum. So, yeah, you see these guys with these 30 and $40 million houses right now, and P's house ain't like that right now, because guess what? He probably he probably looks at it and says, okay, this upkeep on his house is ridiculous. Well, I'm not going to spend all this money upkeeping on his house, you know, when I can get me a, you know, a $10 million crib. Why do I got to go get me a $30 million crib? I had a 20-something million dollar crib back in the 90s with the gold ceilings. Y'all seen MTV, uh, How I'm Living, MTV Cribs, whichever one it was. How I'm Living, I think, was on BET. The things that people are just now doing, dude was doing 20, 25 years ago. So now he's ventured over into the food business. He found his own lane. Okay, liquor, everybody's doing liquor. You know, he's doing the water. He's doing the food. He's doing the... And then the cereal, this thing's going to be big, man. It's going to be huge. You're going to start to see other artists and, 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 you know, people venture over into this... Uh, into this lane. Trendsetter. He's a trendsetter. So that's why I say, you know, there's no knock on anybody else, but I ain't seen nobody do it as big as Pete. I ain't seen nobody even close to No Limit, man. When No Limit was at his at his peak, his heyday, oh, man, you couldn't touch it. Everybody wanted to be a No Limit soldier. I done made videos about this. Everybody wanted to be a No Limit soldier. Everybody. Pete could have signed anybody that he wanted to sign. You name one person that didn't want to ride with P, you know, in the late 90s, 98. Mr. Make them say, uh, 99, 2000. Show me anybody that wouldn't have signed with No Limit. Anybody. P made artists from the hood, from his hood. Yeah, he had Snoop, but outside of Snoop, think about it. Who did really, who did P really have outside of that? Yeah, Birdman and them, they went and got Drake and Nicki Minaj, and that's a great accomplishment, and I'll never knock that. But P was making dudes from his own home, and you know what I'm saying? They wasn't even hot. Drake and them was already hot on the internet. It just was about a machine getting behind them. This is what it was, man. That's real talk. Nobody fooling with the tank, man. Back then... Back then when Master P was really, really hot, in the mid-90s, nobody. 
Nobody. Cash Money came along. They 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 definitely uh took the world by storm. That's you with them big body. That's you with that big body bins, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they came along. I know you ain't gonna let it come in front of you, huh? Stun in front of you, huh? Straight up run you, huh? You got that fire green, huh? You keep your body clean, huh? You got them the uh, Jabo jeans, huh? <laughs> you know, I ain't heard in a minute, but I'm just saying, you know, they was hot. So taking nothing away from them whatsoever. Nothing. And they took it and they ran with it. But P was the first to really, really, really put it down. Soldier Boy said he was the first to do a lot of things. But P was the first to really, really put it down and show people how to really get money in this music business. He didn't let the uh, label dictate what he did or what he was going to do. No. I own this company. I'm calling shots. Y'all don't tell me what to do. I own my company. So that's, the, that's the importance of true ownership. I own my company. You can't tell me nothing. If I want to put out 30 albums in a year, I'm going to do it. Well, that's unheard of, and that's not how the music business is ran, and that's not... Listen, man. Listen. You all just distribute my music and let me handle the rest. Let me handle the rest. Come on, man. It don't get no better than that. True, true ownership. True, true boss, man. A true boss in the game. So did he have some financial issues? I don't know. I'm sure he did. The kid from the hood, man. You get all that money, man. You run into tax problems. You run into people stealing from you. You run into bad investments. You run into a whole lot of different things. So, yeah, he probably did. But who doesn't run into financial issues? So if he doesn't have his masters right now, guess what? Guess what? Who's just, Don't count P out. He might have a deal in the works to where he can get his masters back. We don't know. Slim Thug and all them dudes talking about P is broke and he don't got his masters and WAC 100 and all these dudes. You don't really know what this man has on the horizon. It's big money problems, man. And that's not to knock any of those guys because they very successful as well. But I'm just saying there's a difference between when your network is, you know, three or four million dollars, which is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And that's a great living and, and, and you've done well for yourself. But when your net worth is worth three or four million dollars, opposed to if you Google Master P right now, this network is 220 million, I think. So people say, oh, no, that's not right. There's no way he's worth 220 million. Hey, guess what? I'm not saying that Forbes knows everything because obviously they don't know everything that's in your bank account. They don't know everything that you have, all your business transactions. But I will tell you this. Forbes is around for a reason and they have been around for a reason. So they're not that far off. So if they say that P's worth 220 million and he's really not, okay, he's worth 150 million. That's a 70 million dollar difference. Let's just say they still off. Uh, he's worth 50, he's worth 100 million. So he was off 120 million. So instead of him being worth 220 million, he's worth 100 million. You all like, no, we look at numbers sometimes and I'm guilty of it. We look at numbers. Oh, well, he's worth 80 million. Well, he's only worth 30 million. Do you all know how much money that is? If you worth seven, 800,000, you're doing very well for yourself. Two, 300,000, you're doing very well for yourself. Because if you're worth three hundred thousand, that's to the good, no debt. Or if you do have debt, your income or your uh, uh, your assets outweigh your liabilities. So just imagine if you're worth you know a half a million, you're doing very very well in life. This dude is worth at a very on the low end a hundred million dollars. And then you got guys that's worth three and four million dollars calling him broke. Y'all out of your mind? Are you smoking? Are you drinking? Have you bumped your head? How can you call somebody that's worth on a low end fifty hundred million dollars? And when you Google you, it says three four million dollars. So let's just say Google's off. You worth ten million. You're not, you're not worth three or four million. You're worth 10 million. You're worth 15, 20 million. And that's really, 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 really stretching things. 
this man is worth 220 million. No, but we're gonna say we're gonna say Google's off. So we're gonna we're gonna uh uh subtract 120 million. He's worth 100 million, and you still got something to say? You still have something to say about a man who breathes? He blew breath. He blew air into the the music industry where they was coming along, just just taking from the artists, just taking. Giving the artist crumbs. Then you got a guy that comes along and say, nah, nah, this not happening. Plus, I'm going to show everybody how to get this bread. Y'all, uh, um, what's dude's name? Uh, Chameleonaire. He told a story about Pete. About how he got back at the record label. Okay, y'all want to give me my money? Don't worry about it. Cooler heads prevail. Catch more bees with honey. Don't worry about nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. Yeah, man, I got a, a whole bunch of projects coming out. I got a whole bunch of uh, artists that I just signed. You know what I mean? I need $100 million. Y'all already owe me all this money, but y'all don't want to give it to me. I'm going to beat you out your own game. I need $100 million for my budget. Write him a check. $100 million. I don't know if it's exactly $100 million, but I know it's somewhere right around that range. Write him a check for $100 million. Boom. I'm done. I'm out the music industry. All the artists, P, where my bread at? P, you owe me this money. Nah, bro. <laughs> Universal owes y'all that money. I'm out the game. Smart, smart businessman. 50 Cent tells stories about how, you know, when P knew that he was going to blow up, he was the first person to really, really believe in him. So I'm going to book you for all these shows at 10000 a show. 50 Cent. Yeah, I'll take that 10 bands a show. 50 Cent blows up. P probably charging 150000 a show for 50 guess what he has to do the shows because he's on a contract smart businessman he's doing things that people weren't even thinking about doing back in the day so that now people are starting to do some of these things it's like you all forgot roy jones say y'all must have forgot y'all must have forgot about p and the brilliance and the business and you know what i'm saying like just just everything that he brought to the game so again, no knock on Cash Money Records, no knock on Birdman. Birdman is definitely doing his thing. Man, there's no telling how much he could sell his catalog for. Whenever he decides to sell Cash Money Records catalog, there's no telling. So Birdman has definitely made more money. He's definitely, but at the end of the day, it doesn't come down to just that. As I referenced earlier, LeBron James made more money than Michael Jordan as far as on the court. Now, Michael Jordan is still worth way more, but I'm saying as far as on the court. And his stats are astronomical his stats are better than michael jordan's but guess what he played a lot more years that doesn't necessarily make him better it makes him great because he has the longevity and he has the you know he, he has the will to play that long but it don't mean he's necessarily better than jordan because his numbers are better but again in my opinion man the best execs in the game man you got master p and then you got Birdman right underneath it. So it really is really not too much of a comparison. They're from the same place. You just got one that's from one hood, the Magnolia. Then you got one that's from another hood. You know what I mean? The Calio. But they all within the same, you know, 10, 15 minutes of each other. Same city. Dudes ain't got no problem with each other. P said he'd be talking to Birdman. They just talked the other day. Just because they never worked with each other because they, they had differences. You know, back then, Birdman said it was a bloodbath. It was war. So we can't do mu uh, music with you all because we got problems with the Calio. Calio, Master P and them can't do uh, music with Birdman and them because we got problem with the Magnolia. Then everybody's related back then, and this person got killed, and they saying that you had something to do with it, and that person got killed. So we don't know the truth. So guess what? We stay over here. Y'all stay over here. They all seen each other in the clubs. Y'all right there in the same area. Them dudes ain't never had no problems with each other. For Just the media wants to, uh, it's a story. So the media wants to paint that picture. Them dudes ain't got no problem with each other. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them go on tour or do something together. I already seen Juvie on tour with him. You already seen P do a song with Lil Wayne, uh, uh, Turk. Anyway, man, Real Kings TV, man, I'm going to get back to this Dallas game. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chiz Channel if you're not already subscribed. And hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action, this heat, you're amongst the first to receive it. We out.